That is so wonderful that we are included in Jesus' prayer to the Father. This is specific. He's being intentional to his dad. How many of us are intentional? When we pray, are we just praying for ourselves? Are we praying for our family too and our friends and our brothers and sisters, right? He's showing us how to pray. Right? Here again we see Jesus' thoughts of oneness with God. <clears throat> then he said in verse 22, The glory gave me, gave to me, I've given to them, past tense, I've given to them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be completely one, so that the world will know that you sent me, and that you have loved them just as you have loved me. Past tense. Mm -hmm. That you have loved them just as you have loved me. Mm -hmm. God always loved us. That's why it's past tense. And Jesus needed to release this to us to show us that through prayer, by hearing, that we will have faith that our Father loved us just the way He loved Him. Okay? In other words, He was declaring all the glory God gave Him has already been given to all believers. Past tense, right? What's the glory? Eternal life. What's the glory? Power. What's the glory? Authority. What's the glory? Miracles. What's the glory? Signs and wonders. Right? <clears throat> I'm going somewhere with this. This is really amazing. I mean, you should be cheering. Like, wow, you know, <clears throat> all of the glory of God has been given to me when I believe in Jesus. That means when I go to India, when I walk into the room, and it's full of Hindu worshippers, all of them are going to fall down, and all the demons are going to leave. That's what happened in India, sisters and brothers. That's exactly what happened. There was no time to learn because there's nothing to learn. Really. The Holy Spirit cannot be taught. It has to be caught. You need to walk into the place and you need to know who you are in Jesus. When you walk in there, there was no time. Our sister, one of our sisters, so what do I do? I said, no, just, just cast out the demon. There's no time. Sharon's interceding and uh, beside somebody, I don't know, Pastor George says, Sharon, cast this demon out! She was casting demon out. I have a, I have a video on that. How do you like that? This person actually arched back, arched up back, went down, screaming. Tons of ladies holding her down. And then she was delivered. Why? Because all of God's Glory has been given to us. Do you understand that? That is the reason why he prayed this powerful prayer. Man, come on. This is God talking to himself here. He's the Trinity, but he's talking to himself. You have to understand. That's why he thought of Jesus in the flesh as a third body. That's not him. That's just a body he used to show you who he is. He is spirit. The Holy Spirit is spirit. I don't know how else to explain to you. This is so crazy. Like, you know, when I read John 17, I go, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Inseparable in every way. So you know that when we renew our mind, that's it, it, all it takes for you to understand this is to renew your mind. And then to renew your mind, you need to understand that you are spirit. You have a spirit in you. Everywhere that we went in India, I spoke to the churches about having a spirit in them. And that God is spirit. And that for you to renew your mind, your spirit has to renew your mind. Your mind cannot renew your own mind. <laughs> you have a spirit, man. If your mind trying to renew your own mind, you're being delusional. Your spirit, man, is given by God. Breathe life into you. 
You understand? So when you understand that, your spirit will be able to yoke with the Holy Spirit. Your flesh cannot yoke with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is spirit. Your spirit will yoke the Holy Spirit. All glory is flowing through you. And what you see in the flesh, in the physical, in the last manifestation, of what is already done in the heavenly realm, in the spiritual realm, it's already happening. Believe me, you know, when I was in India, I'm going to say this, but it's getting recorded, but I was, I was at my nephew's wedding and, you know, she married a, a Hindu. And uh, even though he's not practicing Hindu, but what happened was the family, all the family members were from Delhi. And, and you know, they have a lot of rituals, right? And a lot of Hindus for generations, and not just Hindus, but anybody, you know, like, they could be doing rituals, they don't even understand why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. So they put them on the stage, and they got this priest that had this fire in the middle, and had these three different things that they put there, each one representing a different spirit. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, they were conjuring up the spirit of the fire. You know how I know all this? Thank God for mixed marriages. Because they had a translator there. Now he's calling out the spirit from the fire. In Jesus' name, I bind you, spirit of fire. Thank you very much. Now they're calling out the spirit from this whatever. In Jesus' name, I bind you. And then they start marrying my niece to the demon Shiva. Wow. And then they start marrying the groom to the demon Lashmi, the female counterpart. See, people in the wedding, we were all going, you know, including people in Indians, they were all going to the buffet eating. They couldn't care less. It was just a ritual. But do you know how important that is? They were trying to make an agreement between the newlywed with the demons. They were contrary. Huh? I sat in front, 25 feet away, speaking in tongues for an hour and a half. My sisters, they're looking at me and they're going, Don't you want to eat something? I'm not even paying attention to them. Don't you want a pakora? I know time for the physical. There is a battle in the spiritual. Trust me, during that time, everything went wrong. The priests were fighting the other priests, the lights were falling, everything, the heavenlies opened and closed. You know why? Because we have all of the glory of the Father in us when we believe in the name of Jesus. When you know who you are, demons scream and run. They run. The next day, my niece came up to me and she was thanking me. And she calls me Jiku, which is second uncle. She says, Jiku, thank you so much for praying yesterday. She knew it. It was so tough for her. But I always tell you guys, don't put harmony over truth. Put truth over harmony. Too many times we go to different places, like even when we went to Bali, you know, careful when you go visit those exotic places. You walk in there and then all of a sudden, there will be a priest that comes and hey, Take this joss and worship this God. You do that, you just made an agreement. Yeah. Who do you worship? The Father in heaven, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> we went to this place in India. Later on you will see it, very interesting place. It was built by Akbar the Great. Abba the Great is the grandfather of Shah Jahan that built the Taj Mahal. And <clears throat> he, he couldn't have any children. So he went to Udaipur where I went for this wedding. And then some guy told him that he could go to Patipo Shikri. And there he would meet a saint that will tell him and bless him. And he will have a child. So he went there. He partnered the enemy, and the enemy made it happen for him, right? 
So he got a child. Mm -hmm. And then he built this huge place. And he had three wives. One Hindu, one Christian from Goa, and another one uh, Muslim. So the Hindu wife gave birth to a child. And to a king, that's huge because then his kingdom will continue, right? So he, he blessed his wife with huge palaces. And inside the palace, there were a lot of tombs. Now we had a tour guide that took us through all these places, you know. And then we went through all these tombs, keeping over the tomb. And then finally we came to this place, and this is guy. He was telling us that uh, here lies, there's a building that white building, here lies the saint that prayed over Akbar. And he, his wife was able to conceive. And by the way, President Sarkozy from France and his wife came here. They couldn't conceive and they came here. They put this cloth over the tomb of the saint and they conceived. So all you guys need to do is buy this cloth, put on the tomb of the saint and make three wishes and keep it confidential. Don't tell nobody and your wishes will be answered. So this priest, so-called, was trying to bless, he was going at Raymond, and he was kind of about to bless Jeline, he was just about to bless Sharon, he was just about to bless me, in Jesus' name, you're not touching me. That's right. And then I asked my brothers and sisters, I said, what does the Holy Spirit, what is he telling you? And they all look at each other and say, time to go. I say, good. So we stood up. The moment we stood up, we put truth above harmony. Guess what? The guy was screaming at us. Hey! Where are you going? We're going. Mm. We got the tour bus to catch. <clears throat> Just telling you guys, don't put harmony over truth. You're a child of the Most High God. You have all the glory that Father has given Jesus in you because the Holy Spirit is in you. You're one with the Father. Now I want you to just meditate on this. You're one with the Father, with Jesus, in Jesus' name. Should you, are you still scared when you go to places like we went to this little village, we drove for six hours went to this village and we were told, oh, it's 90% Hindus and they don't like Christians and this and that. We walk in there. You know how God can say that I will never leave nor forsake you? <laughs> <laughs> because he cannot lie. His son prayed his prayer. And he answered his son. We're forever one with God. In Jesus' name. One. As you are in me, I am in you. As they are in me, the glory you give me, give it to them. Is that sinking into your heart yet? Do you know why Jesus prayed this prayer? Before the cross? It's in preparation for you from law into grace. So that you understand the true meaning of the cross. Oneness again. Because of Adam, we were separated. But because of Jesus, we are one again with God eternally. Because God is eternal. Jesus is eternal. If you're one with them, you're eternal. You understand? So we shift from being excluded to being included when this happened. <clears throat> you know, in these verses, we start to see God's heart of uniting us with Him through Jesus. You can read that in verse 22. 23. The glory you gave me, give it to them. Right? And then we start to see that it's Jesus' obedience, not ours. 
He's the one that released all of God's word to us. We read that in 6, verse 6. He says, I have revealed your name to the man you gave me out of his will. They belong to you, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they understand that everything you've given me comes from you. Because I've given them the words you've given me, they accepted them and really understand that I came from you and they believe that you sent me. Okay? And then, he is the one that answered his call to the cross, not us. It's Jesus that went to the cross. And we read that when Jesus had finished saying all these things, he looked upward to heaven and said, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son so that your Son may glorify you. Okay? Glorify your Son. He didn't say glorify you. <laughs> Not yet, Tom. He says glorify your Son, right? So He went to the cross. He is the one that shared the glory first with God and then released the glory to us. Why? We read that in verse 5. And now the Father, and now Father, glorify me at your sight with the glory I had with you before the world was created. It was His glory, sharing it with us. So He is the one that completed what God gave Him to do also on earth. We see that in verse 3. Right? He says, Now this is eternal life, that they know you, and the only true God, Jesus Christ, whom you sent. I glorify you on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Who completed it? Jesus did. Right? So from John 17, we learn, one, we are one with Christ Jesus and God. Two, we have the glory of God through Christ Jesus. Three, we have eternal life because Jesus released that glory to us as He is eternal like God is also. Four, that in Jesus' name we walk forth with the authority given to Jesus by God. Remember, He said, I have been given all authority over mankind. For what purpose? So that we have eternal life. Amen? Now five, that signs and wonders and miracles are part of oneness with Christ Jesus and God the Father. Okay? And six, finally, most importantly, Jesus did everything for us. Not our effort or merit because we deserve, just by His grace. He did everything. You can find out in this prayer in John 17 that He did. That he completed everything for us. So ladies and gents, the empty cross gives access to all what Jesus prayed for in John 17. He was preparing for the cross. He's interceding before the cross. He's including us before the cross even. Right? <clears throat> Do you notice how Jesus did not beg once in John 17? The way he prayed. He never begged. He never said, please. You don't find a single word, please, then. Okay? Alright? If you're praying, please, God, you don't know that you're one with God yet. Ooh, a lot of people are scratching and smiling. And, please, God, I don't know if I'm going to get this job. Please. Read John 17 over and over again. There's not a single word of please there. There's no begging. He just declared and he agreed. He just declared and he agreed. See, when we really know who we are in Christ Jesus and God, we are one. When we are one, we agree and declare with authority and power. That's all you need to do. You just declare. Okay? And agree. Because you're one. Are you begging to yourself? Are you like, does God beg himself? I mean, like, please. No. You just say, I am who I am. I am who I am. I just have to agree with my own words. That's why when you pray, you say, in Jesus' name. And they say, Amen. That means I agree. Amen. I agree. 
Now don't try to say, please, 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 beg, 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 amen. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Next week I'll talk more about that. We do not beg when we pray. Don't beg when you pray. Two words, agree and declare. Agree and declare. We are united in Christ Jesus. You are one with Jesus and the Father. Do you know how significant that is? So today, I like to leave it at this stage because I want you to go back and meditate on John 17 because this is really critical before the cross. Right? Next week, I'll be talking about, you know, why do we pray in Jesus' name? Why? Right? Just know today, if you forget everything that I told you, know that you are included. You're not excluded. Jesus Club is not an exclusive club. It's an inclusive club, you know. We're included. Because he used past tense. Okay? So we are included when you believe. Do you receive this? Mm-hmm. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. So today I make it a short sermon because I broke it into two parts. And uh, we're just going to now.